what's up, y'all? I say it. What's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on our video, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Share the video. Turn on your notifications. Go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86 TV. If you got a breakdown or a prediction that you'd like me to do for you, you can hit my email up at knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com. And don't forget that we live every Wednesday and Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. We also live every Sunday morning with the Singing OG KQKC Boxing Network, Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And don't forget, we also live now, too, on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. So y'all be sure to check out those live streams. We got the debate series going again, so y'all hit me up. Knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email if you want to join the debate series, or you can hit me up on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV and join the channel for ex for exclusive content so you can get our predictions before everyone else, um, and that's becoming a member to the channel. But let's get it popping, bro. Fight prediction. This one is a 10-round heavyweight fight, also on the Showtime card. We did the Mario Barrio Giovanni Santiago prediction. We did the Ray Vargas or Shaky Foster prediction. This is another fight from that card. A lot of evenly matched fights going down this weekend. And so if we're able to get them right, you can make yourself a little change this weekend. We got Lanier Perro versus Victor Vickrist. 10-round heavyweight fight. Vickrist is a minus 125, and Perro is a minus 105. So that means that this fight is extremely close to the odds makers. Uh, Vickrist is 11-0 with seven knockouts, 30 years old out of Ukraine. Orthodox fighter, six foot five with an 81-inch arm reach. Perot is a 30-year-old uh, out of Cuba, southpaw fighter, six foot four, with a 79-inch arm reach, eight wins, no losses, five wins by way of a knockout. And as they say, somebody, oh, got to go. Somebody going to take their first L. Two highly decorated amateur fighters. Both of these guys have been to the World Series of Boxing. Um, Perot, though, more decorated. Cuban national champion, um, 2016 Olympian, um, and... Although Ukraine has come on strong as of late, with guys like um, Vasily Lomachenko, guys like um, Alexander Usyk, Cuba is still the creme de la creme when it comes to amateur fighting. So when you win in Cuban national championships, when you um, go into the Olympics out of Cuba, you a highly skilled fighter, uh, Lanier Piro. As a matter of fact, he got a signature win. He beat Frank uh, Sanchez in the amateurs. The highly touted heavyweight that we all saw uh, school F.A. Ajagba, uh, yeah, Perot beat that guy when they were both amateurs. But for Victor Vichrist, um, look, man, he's a powerful dude. He moves in straight lines, though. When you think of Ukrainian boxing, he, he don't fit the mold. He got more of a Eastern European, straight up and down, orthodox style where he likes to fight behind his jab, use his length when he's taller than guys, and then, you know, fire off that nice right hand that he got. If you get on the inside with him, he's more of a wrestler. He's more of somebody that doesn't really turn over his shots well, doesn't get good leverage well, um, not real good hand speed. Um, the movements are straight line movements, not a lot of pivots, not a lot of turning you, not a whole lot of agility coming from Victor Vickris. But if you allow him to keep you at the end of his shots and keep you at range, since he is six foot five with an 81 inch arm reach, you allow him to keep you at bay and kind of probe with that jab and fire off that right hand. That's where he's most dangerous. But if you can get him in the phone booth, if you can make him have to um, show some some lateral movement, make him have to um, be more defensive, he got a lot of holes defensively. Um, not real quick with his head movement. His guard and hands aren't really fast or really versatile. So he's definitely there to be hit at the highest level. And another thing you have to worry about him in this fight, he's never fought a southpaw at the professional level nearly as talented and as skilled as Lanier Perot. For Lanier Perot, um, he's a guy that is very slick for a heavyweight, um, has pretty good head movement, but he can get caught. He was in a fight with, um, it was a damn good fight. I think he's fought the far better professional than either, than, um, than Vickers right now. Let me see what that guy's name was. Cause he was one of the guys that I, um, studied for this fight and he put on a good performance, man. Um, this guy, Giovanni, uh, Bruzon, good fighter, man. He, he fought, he fought Leonard Perel, Perel well. Um, Perot got the unanimous decision, but that was a tough fight. And um, they were both southpaws in that fight. But Perot, much more comfortable on the inside than Victor Vickrist. And he also is good enough on the outside with his hand speed. He got a nice jab, too. Specifically, um, his right hook, to me, is his best shot. His lead right hook, whether it's at the body 
or up top, if he can get in close enough, that right hook he got, he could get great leverage on it. Sometimes he can throw his, his left straight left um, kind of awkward behind his jab, but if he leading with it, it's crazy because if he lead with the straight left, it look good. It look like it got snapped to it. But he get to um he get to throwing the one two. It can look a little awkward at times. You like, bro, what's wrong with your left hand, bro? And that could have been the byproduct of Giovanni Bruzon just pressing him and kind of pushing him back and making the fight uglier than I thought Perot probably anticipated. But all in all, man, I think Perot is the slicker of the two, the more skilled, much more comfortable in a phone booth, um, better combinations, better hand speed. Um, he actually has the more athletic and agile feet of the two. And v Chris might be the physically stronger, more imposing figure, more muscular, um, probably has the better straight punch that his – Straight right hand, I would grade just a little bit higher than that of Lanier Perot. Um, what this fight is going to come down to is can Victor Vickris catch Perot with that right hand and keep him where he want him and slow Perot down? If he can't, I think Perot's kind of superior movement, his superior angles that he can take because he, he takes angles. He doesn't move in straight lines, and, and he can attack from different varieties of angles in a way that Victor Vickris can't. If he's able to use his angles, use his superior boxing skills, in my opinion, and find his way to kind of on the inside of Vicrista's power, then I think Leonard Perot um, will win this fight and win it pretty handily and could even quite possibly get the stoppage because he does have some crack up there at heavyweights, and we know with heavyweights it only takes one. Plus, he goes to the body very well, and that could pay dividends later on in the fight. Um, as far as who I'm picking and, and why I'm picking them, um, y'all know how we do with the picks, man. I think that Victor Vickris can win this fight, um, but I think he only has one way to win the fight. I think his, his his way is landing a right hand early in the fight and then being able to dominate the action because he disciplined Perot and made it to where Perot was just hurt and tired, and he either stops Perot or because he hurts him early, Perot never really recovers, and Vickris wins the decision that way. If he cannot hurt Lanier Perot, he cannot outbox Lanier Perot, in my opinion. You know, I'm always here to be proven wrong. That's why they fight. That's why we watch the fights. But in my opinion, if the Chris can't tame him with a right hand early and Perot gets some sort of rhythm and he's able to 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 um, use his superior head movement and his superior angles that he takes, get his jab going, find his way on the inside, slip and rip some hooks down to the body and control the action from that standpoint, his superior boxing skills, his superior mobility, his superior head movement, I think, will take over the fight, and his superior counterpunching ability will take over the fight and, and kind of lead him to victory. And that's why I anticipate happening. I got Linear Perot um, by unanimous decision. They both undefeated. I think they both gonna fight with good heart. Um, and so I'm not picking um, Perot to get the stoppage, but if he does get the stoppage, I will not be surprised because the Chris is definitely there to be hit with clean shots. Um, but I'm gonna pick a decision in this one. I got Linear Perot unanimous decision somewhere along the tune. About seven rounds to three. Sound about right to me. 97 to 93 on a couple of scorecards. Um, if he really in his bag, it might be 98 to 92 on a scorecard or two. Um, but I think he's going to win the fight and win it handily. It's not going to be that close. Y'all let me know who y'all picking down in the comment section. Comment down below. Smash my like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Turn on your notifications. And go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. For breakdowns and predictions, you can hit my email up. It's knockoutboxing 86 at yahoo.com is the email address but let's go ahead and get to the next video man i'll catch y'all next time peace out